Hi, welcome there, guys, to Once More Into the Void, Should Suns Rise. My name is Victor. My uh, pronouns are he, they, and I play Anarch, the captain. And um, Hamna, why don't you introduce yourself? All right. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Hamna. I use any and all pronouns, and I'm a TTRPG performer. And today I will be playing Liana, who uses he, they pronouns, and they are the bound. All right, cleric. Hello, I'm Cleric. I use they, uh, they, he, he, they pronouns, and I am playing the Broken, who is Lopez, who uses they, them pronouns. Just a broken little, just a, just a broken six foot tall man, or person. It's just so broken. <laughs> My type of man, Leo, not <laughs> Katrina. <laughs> That's actually, you know, hey, you know, uh, I'll take that as a compliment. Uh, hi, I'm Katrina. My pronouns are she and they, and I am playing the sad android Leo. Uh, whose pronouns are they and them. And they're so, the strange. Strange. <laughs> and last but not least, Jay. Hi, I'm Jay Justice. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm playing Melita Nuru, the steadfast, and her pronouns are also she, her. All right, I'm so glad to hear it. Now, last one we left off, um, Anarch seemed to be sort of reaching across to the crew. Um, first, we had a violent confrontation in Anarch's hometown where Anarch and Lopez had to team up and try and fight off Anarch Prime, evil Anarch, um, his twin brother, who the enemy seems to have revived and is using for their own purposes. Um, things were pretty great in the team up until Anarch realized that he had lost his hometown. Uh, moving along, though, in this sort of, like, rough state, Anarch and Leo got to you know, repair the ship together and sort of repair their relationships together. Um, promises that were broken had, were brought up and remade, and hopefully we're looking towards a better future where Anarch promised Leo that, like, hey, you know, I want to show you all that humanity has to offer. Um, and then finally, Liana came with a very, came very distressed, looking to try and improve Lopez's quality of life by retrieving a battery pack. Um, they needed Anarch's help, and Anarch readily gave it. However, it led to a very dangerous mission. Liana's um, when we arrived, the, the warehouse is <laughs> sorry. Folks. <laughs> the warehouses that held the battery pack. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, were set aflame by our bachelorette bounty hunters who just give us such issues. <laughs> <laughs> I will never get used to this voice. I, I don't think Perfect. I will. Good. It's I hope so I'm jarring from like. It's just normal, just total voice. It's just like, hey, we're just doing things. This hello, everyone. It's like, oh, mm. <laughs> I hope yeah. it gets more jarring as my voice gets more masculine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um but uh, Liana uh, had to be calmed down. But when everything was going up in flames, they sort of lost control and revealed a power that we didn't know that they had. Uh, love shadow tentacles destroying the whole warehouses, babe. <laughs> uh, Leo sent uh, Anarch sent Leo to try and calm Liana while they went to look for the battery pack, and it resulted in Anarch um, getting a new scar uh, from Liana's uh, lack of control. So Anarch was pretty uh, quick to forgive, and Liana was very distressed <laughs> still. Um, but the crew seems to be coming together finally. Um, but at the end of our session, the enemy seemed to get that much more powerful, and we are unaware. And so at that point, uh, thank you guys for listening to our recap. Jay, you have first game. Why don't you tell us what that game is and who you're playing with? So the game we're going to play is what we once were where we can't leave the past behind. It's a mini game for two or more crew members who experience a flashback, a direct look at the past that may hurt or strengthen us. This is a reflective and insightful time. When you choose this mini game, choose another character to explore your past with someone who was essential in influencing who you are now. And I chose Leo. So uh, we're on the ship and 
I have lovingly teased Lopez about, you know, how adorable Liana and Lopez are. And what we we also did get some work done because we had to fix the ship. But <laughs> after after we were done, just uh just you know, just just appreciating the homies, uh, I went through the inventory in my little like programs we've been using to upgrade things. And something I saw reminded me of a program I had once given a young Leo when they were just starting out, trying to figure out who they were. And I thought to myself, I should, I should check on Leo and, and see how they're doing after this like momentous mission where much humanity was observed. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so I go uh, looking for Leo. And what is Leo up to as I, as I look for them? Uh, Leo is actually probably in the, uh, what, what is that called? The galley, like where the food is, mm -hmm. um, uh, they're, they're actually there just like, you know, um, probably tapping away on like maybe a little tablet or something. I don't know. Um, just like reviewing stats and data and stuff about the ship, making sure everything is ship shape, uh, and, uh, you know, just like vibing and working. So they're they're hanging out there, and I guess it's like as Maletta approaches, Leo doesn't look up immediately, but Leo is is quick to acknowledge once they hear those footsteps coming in, and uh, and they lift their head and say, "Maletta, it's good to see you. How are you feeling?" And that's like the first thing they ask. I'm doing as well as can be expected. I think. Thank you for asking. I appreciate it. Maletta grabs some spaboba from. <laughs> From the little machine they have in the corner. <laughs> Spoba. <laughs> Spoba. I love that. <laughs> yeah, and and Leo um Leo uh, uh says Leo's like I've observed that uh the past few days have been rather intense for all of us, and so I just wanted to make sure you were doing well. Oh, I appreciate that. No, Leo, you can work anywhere in the ship, but I really love that you always tend to go to places where you're likely to run into one of the crew members, even though you don't really need to, like, eat food or be in the galley. It's always wonderful to get to see you just, just hanging out with us. I believe it's important to my development more than anything else. Uh, I Spending time with the crew has been a, a positive change, I believe, uh, as opposed to being in the laboratory that Anarch and I recently blew up how did it make you feel when you uh blew up that laboratory i assumed it would make me feel upset but i have since realized that perhaps i was never happy there uh it wasn't necessarily a place where i lived it was a place where i operated if that makes sense it does. I feel like we're all trying to find a place where we can truly live and not just operate. It was such a deep vibe. <laughs> we was getting real deep. Uh, and I think that's something that like really dawns on them too. Like they've, the, the, having this moment to like slow down has kind of like given Leo the perspective of like, yeah, being in that laboratory was like, it was just going back to my robot self, you know, it was resetting. And I felt like maybe that's where I was supposed to be. And then they start elaborating a little bit of this to Maletta. Um, and they, they, uh, they, they stop for a moment and they ask, like, is it, is it bad that despite everything that has happened, I appreciate being here more than ever? No, I think that despite everything that happened, we probably all feel that way in some sense that this is where we want to be because it just feels better to be with each other than to be apart and to not really get to to feel like we're part of something you know and that's i think what really like maybe triggers the memory but let me look at the rule book to make sure i'm not <laughs> just like woggling off into the distance um uh yeah so that's kind no, of what yeah, what triggers that memory? Um, and 
like Leo stops tapping on the data pad for a moment and like you can see that they're like thinking about it and processing it and then suddenly like their fingers are moving like 60 miles a minute on on top of the data pad and they kind of open up um like this this timeline uh I would say that kind of has like different charts that like that that uh heighten and lower and heighten again and then kind of pan out uh on uh, as like a set line um wow. and what is this? yeah leo leo looks down at the data pad and up at Maletta and then back down at the data pad and they say this is the chart of progression that the the program uh you offered me uh years ago has been detailing and recording uh i sometimes pull it up to deeply understand um, what it's done to my AI and how it has affected me. Wow. I mean, I'm not going to tell you how you work, but I think that more than the program doing anything to you, you have evolved and it's had an impact on what the program can measure. Like that's, that's amazing. The program is actually extremely advanced. I haven't encountered technology quite as intuitive in such a long time. And so being able to look at it gives me great perspective, I would say, uh, perhaps even a bit of self-reflection. I think that's a really good thing. And I look up and they say, I, I agree. Thank you, Maletta. Uh, you gave this to me without me ever asking, and it certainly has helped. Can I tell you a secret? Of course. I will always keep your secrets locked away. I have passwords set so that these are never accessed in my memory. I imagine your passwords are very long and hard to crack. Oh, yes. <laughs> many numbers, many letters, many signs. Oh, boy. Um, I think that part of why I gave this to you was not only to see what you could do with it, but to give you a chance to, to kind of show everyone that you could be more than what the parts that make you up are. Because I feel like all of us are fighting against being more than the parts that make us up. Like, Anarch is not just the brother of someone who is supposedly better, and we have to talk about that. And I am not just someone who has a destiny or, or or a promise to fulfill or a family that is probably gonna yell at me for not calling them in 10 years. But the point is, I really feel like when we first met and we kind of learned more about you as a synthetic being, the 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 idea of trusting someone who we didn't know and could possibly be like associated with the enemy it was scary but the more we learned about you and the more you were able to show us and tell us I think that we kind of learned a lot about what trust is and what a family can be and that's why I gave you this program because I was like I feel like Leo has so much that they could do and they could learn and they could be but with the limitation of people just assuming that you're just another one of you know them because of where you come from and you know who made you I just didn't want be you to feel assumption. limited by that what's that honey uh it would be a safe assumption it would make sense for anyone to assume that and that is why I've never faulted you for handing this to me I feel as though it was not out of distrust it was out of what you saw as potential and I thank you very much for that can I hug you <laughs> is that okay Yes, you may hug. Gentle, gentle hug. <laughs> I think, um, uh, do you want to move into our memories a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Uh, let's see. The player whose character fears the most, uh, fears the past the most will take the turn. Um, who do you think, I feel like Leo doesn't, like, give enough, <laughs> like, yeah, I don't think like, fear really like applies. <laughs> Yeah, I think their only fears apply when, like, you know, the maker is in the building. So <laughs> it's a little different. My 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 uh, character, Maletta's secret fear for Leo is that even though you've grown so much, 
and she's not saying this, she's just thinking this, she grown so much. What if something happens and the enemy reverts you back and we never get to see the Leo that we have again? That's that's why Mileta was like, I want to just hug you because I'm scared that we're, something Ooh. terrible is going to happen and we're not going to have you anymore and we don't know how to get you back. Because I love even though you're even though you're synthetic, you're you're as irreplaceable as any organic being on this ship. There is no one else like you. There is no way to get you back if you're gone. Mm -hmm. So <sighs> sweet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I assume then that you get to choose if we relive a memory of pain or a memory of strength. Oh, I would love to relive a memory of strength. It's going to be a memory Ooh. of combat where Leo saves Maletta's butt because that's the first time she saw how strong Leo was. <laughs> yeah! Leo's, Leo's intense, like, anime strength. Yes! Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, when, we, so when we hug and you're so gentle and you gently pat me, I'm like, I appreciate how soft you're being because I just remember the first time I saw you pop someone's, like, head off with your arm. <laughs> <laughs> oh i love that okay um uh so uh, yeah time when we were invincible maybe or am i reading that wrong i think that, that's correct um so i think maybe the impossible odds that they they face is like maybe that's the first time they had come face to face with the enemy with like leo on the team and so everyone was maybe super nervous about what was about to happen but Maletta like was like first and foremost like the most nervous um because she had taken that risk on leo and like given them that that intelligence um and we're like so, yeah we know that they work on a network but leo's on a different network and there's no way they can cross over right mm -hmm, let looks at everybody mm -hmm. else right <laughs> leo yeah <laughs> Not affirmative yeah so they're like okay. so so they're like, we're, we're like in the middle of that battlefield, right? And there are like a bunch of like prototype, like Terminator style Leos coming at us. Like they're, they're different. Are they naked? Are you can, yeah, they're definitely like. <laughs> they're all this gleaming metal. Oh God. Gleaming they're naked metal. Terrifying. Red eyes. Like no, none of the additional like hair or anything like that. It's just like the 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 skeleton of Leo with like mechanics dun, 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 and dun, stuff dun. like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's exact. Like that's what I when I put Leo together, I was like, it's like a, like two dashes of Terminator, like four dashes of Data, and like a little zing of Android eighteen in there for like the brute strength and the chaos. Um, okay. And. <laughs> so so yeah they're 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 on that battlefield and like maybe they had like gotten separated from the rest of the crew so like not only are you facing these like other leos you're also alone with leo yeah um yeah and uh and so i think the decision is like like you guys are are cornered and like uh if you'll allow maybe maletta has been injured at this point i was gonna say yep so yeah. nursing an injury, holding a bandage, got the gun in one hand. All right, we got to get through this. We got to get back to the others. Mm -hmm. oh, man, how are we exactly. going to get through this crowd? Oh, my. <sighs> Leo, you got, <laughs> and, uh, any, uh, you got any battle strategies in there? Uh, yeah. And then, uh, so yeah, Leo like looks at, at Maletta and like looks down and sees like her state and the fact that like, even though Maletta is like armed, it's not it's not very good if like any of these people get within like three yards of her at this point because by yeah. then all the other leos will like i don't know not eat her because they can't eat things but do curb uh, uh, something similar <laughs> curb stop there we go <laughs> and so so like leo the first thing leo does is like as these as these enemies are approaching they like kneel down next to maletta and they they ask like are you are you all all right? Can you can you hold here for a moment while I take care of this? It's like real cryptic like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so uh so from there, Leo will stand up and like look at the enemies coming all around them and just like raise their fists up. And they do not have big fists. Like they're they're not a very tall, broad person. Like, like they're kind of tiny. I wouldn't put them over like five three. Um, so they take their little their little googly wrists and they like put them up. And then you just kind of see them like this their this that blank stare takes over. 
And I think like for a moment, that might be like the moment where I'm like Maletta, where it's like do or die, you know? Um, and Leo holds there for a moment and then waits like, you can see that like maybe even they're calculating like every single step closer and they wait and they wait and then that one line is crossed and they just like boah, launch forward and it's this just like this freaking you know that move in xena where like like yeah. so they like they'll like knock out one of the the baddies and like grab one of their poles and shove it in the ground and then like pull the xena where like they get up and they're just like kicking in a circle like <laughs> wow ah <laughs> uh, yes the pole dance kick i love it yeah it is Exactly. The pull down. Exactly. Yes. I will yeah. Yeah. The GIF and post it. When when I was eight, I wasn't exposed to pole yet. So like Zeno was my only perspective there. Um, so. As somebody so, yeah. who actually does pole, I'm so curious what this looks like. You haven't seen actually... this? Oh, I'll no. find it. Oh, that, yeah. It's so cool. It takes so much upper body strength. Um, uh, it's yeah. It's like the you'll. I believe both of your hands are. Or actually, yeah, yeah, it's both of your hands this way on the pole, and then it's like all here and here, um, and you're sideways and just like kicking, <laughs> uh, like walking your way around. But in this case, Leo is in fact like stomping their way around the circle to like knock heads off one after the other, um, and it's just like this this ridiculous like action movie like atomic blonde style like <laughs> fight fest um just left and right like robot parts are like going off this way you hear like weird little like like android sounds like and and all that um and uh and when it's all done and the smoke is rising and the dust is clearing um you you don't see leo uh but you do hear that mechanical step closer to you like <laughs> i can't make mechanical noises <laughs> um, uh but it's super ominous and they come up uh and this this figure approaches you in the dust and they look down and reach their hand out and they ask can you get up are you able to stand yes and they take amazing your hand. <laughs> <laughs> They they take your hand um, and they check over you again and you see then that it's like Leo's face, Leo's synthetic skin, all of this. Um uh and and uh they they oh I had it in my head and it just like flew out. Thanks, ADHD. Um, uh they they say, um uh it is my honor to protect you as your crewmate. And I will do it every time I have to. Ditto. <laughs> What's gonna happen? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I, I I definitely see that moment of like like when they're after they like return to the ship or whatever, like Leo has Maletta's arm like over their shoulders and they get back into the ship. And as uh, as Maletta's recovering, that's like the first time that Leo shows her the progress chart. It's like, they're, they're just like, I got a star sticker uh, oh. in my progress chart. It's a little bit more human now because I decided to take those those actions. Um, and because your programming gave me those, those, uh, those decision-making skills. I feel like the part of humanity that you are gaining is the best part, honestly. <laughs> Just the good parts. That's all. <laughs> yes. That's one memory. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> awesome. Um uh let's see. Um, yeah, I think so I with guess that with that discussion of how Maletta felt vaguely guilty for thinking, oh, were my motivations pure in giving this program? And Leo's like, no, it was understandable that Maletta's finally ready to let go of the past and, and not feel like, you know, she was a bad person for just wanting to give Leo more opportunities to show that Leo wasn't like the other synthetic beings. <sighs> so the one like who the revealed other. the most during the flashback chooses a revelation. Who would that mm. be? Hmm. <laughs> I think 
I think the revelation would probably, I mean, it would be both of ours to have like that, Mm -hmm. that this not only does this programming work, but that these enemies themselves, if we really go for it, they can be changed. Like these are androids. They can be reprogrammed any day. Um, and that might be a strength in our final battle. Who knows? So do you think with the other um, androids that it's something where their agency is being removed via a control system in the network? And do you think it's something that's wireless or is it something that is like a switch inside each one? Like how would we be able to, to determine that? That's oh. the, next, the next thing we have to figure out is how can we determine how the control of the enemy works? Because they do, they are able to communicate with each other. They are networked, but is is what dictates their behavior something that is within a signal or is it something where you have to disable each one physically because i know that in uh in human based uh synthetics that we've created in our own time this is from the future in our own time uh there are certain signals that you can play that cancel out um certain like devices such as police dogs if you guys know what i'm talking about so yeah there there are some signals that you can play that will disable them remotely and they can there's no way to remove that uh vulnerability it is permanently hardwired into the system so we have to figure out if if there's something similar with the enemy because if there is they definitely don't want us to know you know what i think would make that interesting is making it like a long-term journey like this is one of the core things Mm -hmm. about Maletta and Leo's relationship is like maybe when the crew sleeps they're like trying to do tests and like Maletta and and Leo have this like armed test room where like you could put Leo in a chamber and like like hook the brain up or something this looks so (laughs) bad to anybody who doesn't know what's going on like that Leo is fully consenting in this because it's like this is going to help us understand the enemy and like maybe at the end of the day we don't have to fight an army yeah, of maybe 6 we can, million we Leos can make new like friends. yeah maybe we can just have a whole bunch of siblings that'd be nice maybe it like, is RuPaul's best friend race after all <laughs> who knows or we like find a weakness or something so like maybe that that is like an ongoing part of their relationship and I'd love to have us go uh, be at a point where like we have tested so much and we have so many theories but Mm -hmm. none of them are like we don't know which one it's gonna be we gotta make some kind of magic box that we press one button it tries everything (laughs) because we're not gonna get more than one shot at this oh yeah oh yeah it's (laughs) the right choice or else you know (laughs) oh no (laughs) how many black cards do we need for that So many. Please, everyone, give us some black cards. (laughs) (laughs) But I love this. This was so good. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. All right, are you ready to to draw a card? You each get one. Yeah, who's first? I'll go first. (laughs) Okay, Jay, you have a red card. Of course. Of course I do. Unfortunately, of course, the enemy has saved all of the data from that fight and any vulnerability that Leo managed to uh, uncover while pummeling them to within an inch of their lives has been documented and they are now reinforcing such vulnerabilities. Sorry. Oh, oh no, no more rock'em sock'em <laughs> with the head coming off. That's not happening anymore. <laughs> Leo's head might come off next. Who knows? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Katrina, are you ready for your card? Oh, let's let's do it. You have black. Ooh. Okay. Um loyalties regained. I think that um something that like I, I feel like Leo's loyalty to Maletta was never like shattered or anything in particular, but maybe it wasn't like as strong as it as it is now. Like before it was more like a, a to them a working relationship, you know, like we're trying to solve this problem together. We're crewmates, like we're gonna work together and look out for each other. Um but with these memories like kind of regained and put like smack dab right in front of them in a form that they can understand. Like they understanding their feelings through data. Um it it uh it makes them, you know, it reminds them of that moment where they they did promise Maletta that they'd always be there to watch out for her. Um and they're they kind of swear at this point that like no matter what happens, like I will protect you during this mission. 
We're gonna be like that meme. No, <laughs> trying to like <laughs> save each other. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, that was a really great game. It was very awesome. Um, so that leads to, oh, is it my turn? It mm. is my turn. The captain's turn to choose. And I will be choosing the game. Before we lose it all, we weren't ready for this trap. Uh, before we lose it all, is a mini game for crew members who are caught off guard when the enemy attacks and boards the ship. <laughs> you see a glimpse of what the enemy is capable of, and you are forced to make difficult decisions. I'm, um, all right, so I'm going to be choosing Jay as my partner for this game. Um, because, oh you know, we are... <laughs> Sorry, I looked at the chat. <laughs> <laughs> what are Lopez's groceries? <laughs> Emergency induction ports. Uh, <laughs> I have to. No, Lopez is like vitamin I have to go D get. tablets. You're not getting no sun in there, dog. Vitamin yeah, that's D exactly tablets. it. No, it's like right before this mission. I think everyone's sitting there's like, okay, uh, I actually have to go run to get my uh, juice pouches. It has all the vitamins I need, like vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin zirconium, vitamin uh, space. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So it has all that. Don't forget the Spitamins uh, as well. The yes, yeah. the Spitamins is that as well. I need to get that. Spidey. And they're all coming. They're, they're a gummy form. So I have to then have somebody melt them down, the gummies, to be in like this like jelly. And then I got to drink it through a tube. You're making uh, us oh, I can help you slurry. with that. I can help uh, melt down the gummies if you'd like. Yeah, I mean, if Hope you're... it's if not you're, with your powers. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're going to... Be like that about it, then I guess not. Leo gets the third wheel on his grocery order. No, no, no. Like I'd really like I'd really appreciate it if you melted it down. However, I mean, however you want to melt it down is cool with me. I mean, it, I have a traditional way of doing it. Like I get like a uh, I have somebody do it for me. Uh, Bunsen burner kind of vibe. Uh, but if you could do it, Leo, you've got a Bunsen burner, right? Attachment. We can. I do, yeah. in fact, have a Bunsen burner attachment. I can come with and help serve and our, this mission. And I can sure. get off my ship. Go do this grocery thing. You Go. can come with, uh, I, if that's cool with Liana. Yeah, I mean, why not? Does right? anyone Leo, else Leo is helpful? Does anyone else need any other groceries? Uh, perhaps we should maintain a list. I, I have a written list that doesn't include anything Lopez asked for. But this is what the ship actually needs for our, like you know, food food processors. But thank you very much, Leo. You are in charge of this trip. I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Leo, excuse me. Honestly, out of the three, I think it would be the most bonding if Leo was in charge. <laughs> I love it. Yes. I guess so. Feels a little rude, but you know, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I assume you two I, think... I assume you two will be rather distracted, so I will maintain the list. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, no, whoa, whoa. Oh, 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 oh. And I don't recall. And high fives, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna go. You two have fun. You, you, y'all have fun also. <laughs> we're, we're gonna be great. It's gonna be fun. Uh, we're gonna be we're not great. gonna. We're just gonna have a good grocery getting. And, see, and, and Leo's happy to drive the shuttle, so y'all can be in the back doing whatever it is y'all need to get done. Bye. We're what? <laughs> Be responsible. Just gonna like um, put the window up. <laughs> oh! Yeah. So what? Oh. What's changed about um Anarch? Uh, Anarch has uh, cut uh, his hair for the first time in a long time, um, just because part of it was burned off. <laughs> you got a smooth fade now. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. The top is still long and and goofy, so he can still feel charming. Um, <laughs> It looks intentional. Yeah. Um, and otherwise, he just has, like, a, a patch on top of the the wound so it doesn't scar as bad. Um, and he's been... he's He looks a lot less exhausted. But I think he's been sort of offloading duties instead of trying to do everything himself. 
I think is uh, what's been going on. Um, and that's how he's changed since we last saw him. Do you think the, the lack of weight of keeping a big secret from everyone you know is... Uh, no, is I don't big... think it's part of it. No, not at all? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unpack that. Just 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 a little bit. Just <laughs> it might be part of it, but like I feel like it's a lot of like um task distribution more <laughs> than like big secrets. I don't know. I mean, I hear that once you get treated for diabetes, the recovery is quite swift. <laughs> This is me talking. It's not Miletta, I promise. No, yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> Miletta's going to be I just so wasn't contrived. prepared. I just wasn't prepared. As a diabetic man, I was not prepared for that. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> 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 on, Boba. It's cool. We're cool. I have my O card for O card question mark for everybody. Gotcha. <laughs> we'll never make that joke again. I apologize. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I'm really glad I got cleric on that one. <laughs> that hit in a very particular way. It was unintentional. Oh, oh my god! I, oh, I'm, I was like, I need to unmute so you could hear how fucking feral that made me. <laughs> okay, well, well Shay, how is, how is Maletta? Maletta really feels uh, better about everything because she's personally seen Anarch be the captain that she loves and has treated everyone with such kindness and patience and respect in such a stressful time and everyone's just come together. And the, the main thing she wants to do now is make amends and like just try to be better because the way Anarch treated Liana was just like, it was really, really kind and it was th- again the captain that that Valetta really wanted to 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 be with. So like, I think she feels like she might have overreacted <laughs> previously. So there's there's if we have time between like you know not trying not to die, there's there's going to be some apologizing in there for sure. I mean, Valetta doesn't know what's about to happen. Neither does Anarch. But you true, know. true. So <laughs> she's probably thinking, oh, good, this is this is a great time for us to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, great. Things have finally settled down somewhat. <laughs> okay. So the inside the wall with the helmets. <laughs> just so you guys know, the players who are away are leading this mini game. So. So the other players sweet. whose characters are not present during the enemy attack conduct the flow of the spinning game. Take turns leading the defending crew members. On your turn, choose one. You will either give us a challenge or a vulnerability. Um, Once everyone has had a turn, the crew member who has made the toughest decision against the enemy, choose any attack, chooses an end. So we're going to have three turns. Each of you are going to give us something to do. (laughs) <laughs> oh i i could tell that y'all weren't ready for this game and i was just so excited to tell you guys that <laughs> you have a little bit. Straight, straight. blue screen <laughs> how much face truly said me <laughs> <laughs> my brain went into like overdrive being like all right so how do we <laughs> how do we cause problems <laughs> in this game the problems just be causing themselves man <laughs> um whichever one of you comes up with one first just go ahead and let us know oh i think i i know exactly where we're starting i think i know <laughs> if I'm if great. if y'all don't mind if i start go ahead dear so i imagine it's been like maybe 20 minutes since, you know, everyone else has left and you and uh, Maletta and Anark are just kind of chill on the ship, talking, doing some repairs. But then Maletta, uh, you'll notice something on your tech, uh, on your kind of screen, uh, mm-hmm. a little like a little one of the, the, the shields are slowly going down when they should be going up. Okay, I don't know if that's a power differential issue or if the shield itself is failing, but something is definitely wrong on the starboard side. Are you seeing this? 
Um, Anarch sort of looks down at his pad. He's been working on ordering some ship parts from some black market contractors who'll still do work with us. And it's just like, uh, that's weird. I wonder if this is just a, this tapping the screen. Now, we're by a system, a very populated system. Uh, so there's some ships flying by or some ships going through. Um, Leta, could you do me a favor and check the radar? I mean, there's some various ships, but there no one's. There's nothing like... on the radar. What? But you look out. There, sh- there should be something there, like satellites or debris. But there's literally nothing getting picked up. We haven't moved, right? No, we're I... still in the same spot. What, well, what happened to the system that we were in? Hold on, and Anarch moves uh, right behind uh, Maletta, and just sort of leans, uh, like peeks over her shoulder, and is like, "That's." We literally, you can see on our viewport right now, there's ships in front of us everywhere. What the hell's going on? And as soon as you say that, the lights go out and three, like, bzzum, 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 goes on top of their ship, like drilling into the holes because the enemy is focusing on sabotaging, sabotaging our essential tech and equipment, and that which could cost us everything. So they've already shut down the shields and they've shut down the radar and they're currently drilling into the ship to drop troops down. Okay. And they dropped the... it right on your uh, right on your workshop, Letta. Which I don't know if you because you guys are in the cockpit, right? Looking at stuff. I think yes. that's where we are. Yeah, so then yeah, they dropped it right ah! on your uh, workshop. So do they that. went for the place that had like not the engine but like the second biggest energy output, and that's where a lot of my stuff is. <laughs> exactly. Um, Anarch so definitely that. has like redundant systems. Like he pulls it up on the tablet, and you see like the outline of a hologram light up both of our faces. I think because I think that's a really cool shot. Um, <laughs> and and um, like they can see the that something is drilling through over Maletta's workshop is like. This is not good. And fuck. All right. Well, on the bright side, if they wanted to kill us, they could have. They're probably trying to take us alive if they're drilling into the ship. Do you have your weapons? Um, Anarch probably pulls like a blaster out from like under, like <laughs> under. Okay, like, so a yeah, we've got, we got the ones that we keep in the cockpit at least. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're, we're both armed at least. Okay. You know your lap best. We need to make sure that maybe what we can do is when they drop into your lab, you can use your lab to mess with them and I can head up through whatever. We could try if they haven't if they haven't gotten all the way in yet, we could try stealing off the doors and telling the ship is a is a hull breach and that way they get vacuumed. Let's, let's do it. Okay. I so, hold... What? We would lose a lot of your equipment if we did that. Not if I magnetize the floor. I feel like... I feel like the void of space versus the magnetize, I think... Well, right, I'm, I'm, assume, I'm assuming they're organic. If they're synthetic, they don't need oxygen. Damn it. Yeah. Do you trust me? Obviously. Okay, so... If... I get into their, I get into their ship. I can probably try and detach them and see if that will. Okay, are you trying to access their ship through the workshop or are you trying to go a different way, like go around? I feel like we can't stop them from drilling into the workshop. Right, but if we close the bulkheads, that that could just delay them from getting into the rest of the ship. What? Just to just to buy you more time. I want to close off that part of the ship so they have to spend time drilling through the wall so that you can take more time to go where you're going. Will that help? What if when I go through that hole, then you activate the bulkheads? They're trapped in. I'm. You think you can get out there, there fast enough because they're they're making their way in there now. See me, run. <laughs> That's the thing I'm best go. at, dear. <laughs> Gently smacks your back. Go! <laughs> Man, and I think, uh, I think Anarch sort of like, um, he grabs something off the cockpit and just sort of slams it onto his face. And it's like, it, 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 it like 
goes all over his head and like it's almost it's like a light thing um and it's it's like a it's like a limited time enviro suit yeah i feel like it is um they use it for ship repair so that way if you just got it there for a second you can still like survive you got yeah. this yeah and then um he's got his blaster and he is bolting for the lab <laughs> casually um, watches him run okay <laughs> 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 um and i think um what you get is him sort of uh grabbing uh like like this like uh it's 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 very much an action scene um we've got to see like a little bit of like anarch um trying to do stuff when the ho when his hometown was being destroyed we and um he was great at running <laughs> <laughs> and then um and then you know we go ahead and you see him sort of grab one of uh like the hoods because every lab has like a hood um and then sort of use it to vault himself up and past uh something that drops down into the lab into a hole and then i think um I don't think he planned on how to signal Maletta, so I think are you not he wearing drops... your earpiece? Like this, is, you're gonna be kidding me. You're not wearing That's your fair. earpiece. That's fair. He probably taps an earpiece. Is like I'm in, and then and then, okay, then and then drops it. into an enemy ship oh alone with a blaster, <gasps> <gasps> wearing a short range earpiece. So if they if they teleport out of there, you're gone. Yeah. And I, oh, this is God. where we're going to go ahead and draw cards. Okay. Hey, uh, is it one for each, or how's this going? Looks like it's one. The crew members who were on the ship at the enemy attack draw card, is that what we're doing, or are we, are we still No, that's, that's the last I, one. Oh, sorry, I, I misread. Oh, I, I think it, okay. what it is is you need to choose which one you want to do, which is walks into a trap I, and then, like, I, destroys everything, or if no, you want to do the I card I sneak board. in and steal what's essential for a mission. Gotcha, okay. Cover me, uh, uh, I need you to cover me, which is a choice I've made. All right, so you have red. Do you need any? That goes into the enemy pile. Oh, oh no. no. Oof. What <laughs> great sacrifice are you going to make? Um, so we don't actually um, make a make a, a red move on these pulls. Oh, thank God. Okay, because that was sad. I'm like, no. <laughs> it just goes into the enemy pile. <laughs> All right. Meanwhile... Um, Back at the mm. grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> yes, how, how's it going in sp sp big lots? <laughs> big lots. So big should, lots. Yeah. Should, should should I get the SPF fifty or the SP or SPF seventy? Where are you applying the SPF? You're not here. Sorry, I'm muted right now. <laughs> Just. Uh, I think. Uh, how. Penetrable is your suit for for sunrise. Oh no, I meant to eat. This is space flavor fifty, which is fifty vitamins, or space flavor 70, 70 vitamins. Oh, then definitely seventy. I mean, more vitamins is, is yeah, but it doesn't taste as good. It right? doesn't taste as good as fifty. Like fifty, uh, fifty is not really the best, but like seventy is you know more nutrients, but like taste doesn't taste that good, you know. Leo, what do you think? Taste or nutrition? Mm -hmm. It appears this is logic over pleasure. Uh, and so I believe logic may work here, and you can buy yourself a little treat in addition to it. You know what? That's good. I'll get this and a, and a Spogert. I love that. What flavor of Spogert do you that like? That sounds good. Uh, you know, I... <laughs> Strawberry. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that one's okay. I, I, you know, I'm personally a fan of a sperry, but strawberry works too. Yeah, I, I think I like the fruit punch, the fruit brunch where it's like combined. You know, it's all the all the berry. Like, uh, there's the sperry bunch. You know. Oh, so when they're together, and not alone, I uh, apart. Well, yeah, because sometimes there are things that are like sometimes they're good separate, but when they're t together, they taste and are better together. Than yeah, because you two know separate they 
flavors. Bring out specific notes of the flavor that you wouldn't have noticed otherwise if they were alone, but when they're together. You know. Yeah, but sometimes you're worried that them being together might be overpowering or uh, too, too much to handle. So maybe you treat them separate. You, you start, you, you need to have them separate. So are you suggesting that you want to keep them separate? No, then? no, no, no. I think that I would like them to be together. But the worry of the overpowering flavors is um, just something that I or people should keep it keep in mind. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think that the two flavors are ones that kind of go well together. You I know, think they go well the, together. Just, just I, 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 wise, I think, yeah. you know, they complement each other in ways. I love this. Can I interrupt you guys with something? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think uh, you guys hear from behind you. Very familiar voice. Um, and it's Anarch. Uh, sort of behind you guys, I'm just like, really? That's what's happening right now? Whoa. A Anarch, why aren't you back in the ship with Miletta? I needed to get out of there. So you left Mulata alone? Seems kind of mean. You really think Mulata can't handle herself? No, Plus, you're right, you're right. Mulata yeah. can... Alright, Anark, what do you think? SPF 50 or SPF 70? I thought we already decided. Okay. No, no, I, 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 I just want to, you know, another opinion. Is... Listen... I don't think we're going to last long, so maybe you should just get with Liana. Uh, Leo's just been in the background, like, uh, weighing Splementine's forages this whole time. Uh, and, and they, like, stop and, like, something, like, doesn't, something's weird. So, something, like, something's not at balance here, but they can't quite figure out what it is yet. So they, like, stop. Mm -hmm weighing the oranges, and the oranges are, like, going back and forth as they're listening to this conversation. Or sporanges, sorry. No. Uh, that's not what we're, uh, talking about here. Oh. Oh, we're talking about food. Yeah. yeah. It's grocery <laughs> brought in our I Yeah. Uh-huh, uh -huh, sure. Uh, all right. Well, actually, I just need to talk to Leo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just take sure. Leo. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh -huh. can... Take your time, guys. You never know what could uh, be going on. You don't know how long you have, anyway. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're docked for another thirty minutes. Uh, that's what that's what Meleta told us. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I think we do know how long how long how long we have. Unless uh, is something like is something wrong? Do we need to? hurry up the grocery run or god you talk so much Leo whoa. come on whoa whoa whoa, whoa. Oh. <laughs> what the f what the fuck what the fuck is your problem right now uh, I'm just bored this is boring and annoying so you can let me leave with Leo or I can make this more fun how will you make it more fun, Captain? Like, at that point, like, Leo, like, shoop, turns right around. Like, if they weren't fully together, their head would have snapped around instead of their body. But we're going to not freak everyone out here. Um, and, the, and, and they ask them that. Um, and I think that's when uh, I, that's when sort of Anarch taps his foot against the ground. And... I think the people who've been milling around everyone suddenly snap exactly how Leo snapped. And um, just this bright blue glow starts in Anarch's eyes. He's like, oh, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> um, and I think um, if this is okay, Katrina, uh, these people rush Leo in particular and starts dragging them away 
Ooh, yes. Oh. <laughs> so all all those splementine spore oranges just like fall all around the ground and like Leo is like clearly struggling, but like are these people like at like are like androidy at yes. Leo's power level? Yeah. yeah. So like Leo cannot get away while they're being dragged. Yeah, and um again, like this this blue uh glow in Anarch's eyes. You know, this is not your captain. And, um, yeah, go ahead. Can anybody else notice it, or is it just Leo that can see it? Everyone notices. He he has revealed that now. That's not Anarch. Or that is Anarch, but that's not our Anarch. Uh, Leo, uh, not Leo, uh, Lopez, always armed. One of the key things about Lopez, pulls out and just starts like i think lopez has like that idea of like do i blast to get rid of leo do i blast anarch that's right in front of us and i think uh i think lopez is gonna start blasting the the he's gonna look at liana and just be like like which will like see which eye direction they're going if they're looking back at lopez or looking straight at uh uh, anarch or fanarch we'll call him fanarch <laughs> I think uh, Liana looks at you with this uh, with this expression that you've seen before from when we've been in fights together in the past as a crew, and I think it's a look of like, do what you need to do. I'll distract him. All right, straight turns around, and starts blasting the ones that are like trying to grab and drag uh, Leo. And I think at that same time, uh, Liana kind of like runs in the opposite direction from Lopez and is trying to pull up some of the shadow tentacles from them. I think they like kind of pull at their feet and then rise up in an attempt to distract Fanark in this moment. And I think uh, seeing these tentacles on the... Uh, I think fan arc is like at Liana's like, oh, I can't wait to see who you hurt next. I think we draw a card if I'm reading correctly. Yep, yep, y'all do. All right, so the card I am drawing for y'all is black. Hey, let's go. Lopez's hand, I think. Oh. It goes into uh, Lopez's or who's? Yeah, because Lopez made uh, the choice um, yeah. to shoot. Yeah, I rush forward, heedlessly into danger, and risk everything to save the one personnel. Uh, you're forced to distract the enemy, uh, and you get badly hurt. I draw a black card. Uh, I keep it in my hand. So I think exactly. Uh, Liana's running to Fanark. I'm running to Lopez and I uh, to Leo, and I manage to like blast them and get uh, Leo out from being dragged. And while that tragedy is happening, <laughs> cut back to the to ship. The ship. <laughs> I think, Anarch, you are uh, trying to get onto the enemy ship, correct? Or you are on the enemy ship are, at this I moment. I am inside enemy territory right now. Yes. And uh, Maletta right. is uh, trying to uh, distract or deal with the whatever three things have dropped into um, her ship. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know if they, they managed to make our radar not work. However, our onboard life science thing is a separate network but the hub is in that room they just dropped into so we have a limited amount of time for that to be functional now it can track leo it can track any of us can it determine the enemy in terms of location and, and what they're made out of that's the we're finding out now so you get to decide I, uh, right exactly so <laughs> I, there there are three synthetic beings in there at this moment I am trying to delay them, so I'm like, if I deploy the anti-flame foam, will that make them annoyed or like <laughs> do anything? <laughs> I, the bulkheads are dropped down, so it would take a standard like blowtorch or drill of anything at least 15 minutes to get through. However, they have future tech, so they're probably like <laughs> slicing through immediately. Um, I can still faintly detect Anarch on the ship, but I'm like, if the minute they move away, we have like no way of tracking. So I'm kind of like stressed about that. <sighs> but I also don't want to talk into the radio because my big fear is what if they hear me talking over Anarch's radio and I get him killed, them killed. So I can't, I can't say anything. So I have to just listen. And, and if I may ask you a question. Can't say anything. What's up? Anarch, if I may ask you a question. 
What is your goal inside of the enemy shift? Why did you decide to go there specifically? Um, if they're damaging our tech, I want to steal the tech that's damaging our tech and um, probably destroy the ship while I'm at it. Sabotage. Okay. Sabotage and theft. <laughs> Sabotage and theft. All right. I think uh, in that case, as you're traveling through the enemy's ship, you obviously don't know uh, how to navigate your way around. It's not uh, a model of ship that we use at all. It's far more Oh, uh, but is it well similar resourced. to the ones they used before? Because we've, we've dealt with this enemy before. So you might have- Have we big... been on an enemy ship before? So I, think I don't think Anarch has. Damn it. I think Anarch had this bad reputation of leading from the back, mm. um, with small exceptions, like with like helping Leo in the past, like discover like, but like um, Anarch wasn't really one to fight up front. Ooh, but have you seen schematics? Ah, Anarch was trying. Anarch was playing super dumb for ten years. <laughs> I'm so mad at you. This is. <laughs> So I think, Anarch, you find yourself in the middle of a hallway. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're skulking around quietly, trying to stay away from the enemy uh, crew that might still be on this ship that haven't drilled down into ours. And you find yourself in the middle of a hallway, and you see two doors that seem to be blinking and open in this hallway. When you look into one, you can see a series of computer networks um, you can see it's probably some sort of information repository, or it's possible it's a control room of some kind. And in the other, you see essentially what it would, would be the equivalent of like the engine room, the heart of the ship, everything that keeps this ship running and keeps it flying and afloat. Where would you go? Um, probably the, this is, First thought is um, information over destroying the ship. All right. So he, yeah, runs in there. So I think you go in to the uh, information room and feel free, Cleric and Katrina, to step in at any point if you have important or fun things to add to this. And how well versed is Anarch in terms of technology? Uh, that anarch is actually much much more well versed than people expect. Uh, I think I know we hinted at this, but um, he was part of the military engineering uh, company and um, of of soldiers, and has like slowly in the background been repairing things, been looking up new technology, been messing with enemy technology for a long time. So this stuff he actually knows a lot about. It's just other people don't think he does. Amazing. So I think as you sit down in front of this uh, computer network, if you choose to go and to try and access any of the information that is on it, you recognize that whatever security system that they've got on it, it's easy enough for you to breach. It'll just take time, but you know that you can do it. It'll take time. You're not sure Ooh. if you have the time to pull it off appropriately before Mleta gets hurt before something happens. She's alone on that ship with at least three different enemies currently cornering her. Ooh. I think um, he'd tap his comms on. It's like, I have a hard choice right now. I can break. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. I can break into and grab some important enemy information, but it'll take time. And I don't know how much time we both have. Or I can run across the hall and blow the ship up to hell. I say try and get the information and then blow the ship to hell if you can get out before it blows up. All right, dear. What's happening with Maletta down on the ship? Okay, so she's trying to figure out in terms of what kind of devices I could activate remotely that might either deter or in some cases deactivate the enemy. Since I've confirmed that they are synthetics, I can generate an EMP. And because we've closed the bulkheads around it, 
I can make it reverberate in a way that might temporarily shut them down. But we, I would need someone to come back quickly because that's only going to work once. They're, they're smart learning machines. So if I do that, we have a few minutes and then they're going to wake up and not be able to be shut down again by anything that I can do. But if I have backup, we can try to like destroy them and then like I, we can deal with that. So uh, the whole thing is, okay, this will work. When do I try it? I, I don't want to wait too long because if they get out of that room, it's not going to work. So the, the clock is ticking. And I've just told Anarch to go ahead and try to do things, even though it might take too long. <laughs> uh, Jay, yeah. let's let um, Katrina go ahead and describe a little bit more of the scene for you, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have not yet made a decision. Um, uh, so I would say with the, the knowledge that the enemy mm -hmm. has, especially, like, person behind uh, the Leo army, um, they're they're already trying to like work their way like through the ship and and get integrated in like everything they can so not only are they like pummeling themselves around but they're also like trying to find ports to hook into the ship and start stealing information um uh but can you can you remind me of the context of exactly what i'm supposed to do to affect this or sorry I was taking notes. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so basically they landed into my workshop and because I yeah. still have one of our tablets, I can remotely like firewall things, but it's it's just a delaying tactic because we know how advanced these things are. The only way I'd be able to stop them is if I could physically remove things from the area, but I can't go in there, they'll kill me. So basically I'm just trying to keep them from getting out before someone can come back and help me kill them because one person with a blaster is not taking out three of these things by themselves. They need to be yeah. like, physically dismantled, yep. But if I might be able to like uh, really powerfully EMP them to the point where nothing in that room will work, everything's gonna be fried. But once they come back online, it's not gonna work again. So, all right, thank you guys so much. We'll be going to break for a little while since we're right at a cliffhanger and we'll be back soon. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so here we are, we're getting ready to get back into the action with a card pull to, dis to determine how well this plan is going. All right, so I have drawn black. Is that going in anyone's hand? Oh, it is going into my hand. All right, I'll put that in your hand for you. Okay, good. The um, So one of us pulls off the perfect distraction while the other discovers a harrowing truth. Um, so, Maletta. Oh, so I guess I've been down here doing the distracting. Yeah. <laughs> the so perfect, perfect distraction. The perfect distraction. Um, I, I put on some, some Spaname and they, the, the, the three of them are just like, Huh. Staring at the screen, at the projector. So they're they're looking at the. the <laughs> they've Sponger never had any Sponger. kind of entertainment before. I like maybe Sponger. I can reach Bow them boy, speed up. through the, are, spot, we are through literally the power in a of life. space weaves. Perhaps we can reach them. And now they're watching it like they've what? stopped trying to drill through the wall. It's the it's the um, not lost. <laughs> It's the movie, it's the anime movie from um, Daft Punk. <gasps> yes! About the androids. Yes! About the androids. <laughs> it's perfect. They're like, huh. And they can't seem to like translate it to anything that they know. They can't seem to get anything from it, but it's 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 strangely beautiful and compelling. So they just kind of stare at it. Once a Leo, always a Leo. Yep. Yeah! around the world okay that's legally how much we can get away with yep, yep. <laughs> um, perfect distraction i've got I'm... 16 terabytes of spaname new powers <laughs> activate <laughs> in contrast to like to contrast the scene anarch is in an enemy ship that um i think a lot about like design for people and so like when you think about like transporting people there's a lot of different comforts that you have to deal with when you think about transporting androids i feel like this is the most stark like completely empty of comfort style ship that anarch has been like sort of pushing through and um and like uh his leg is jumping he is very nervously standing over these servers that he has had to like sort of 
pull stuff out of, I feel like, to even interface with because he's not an android. Um, and, like, his eyes are searching, trying to figure out what exactly he can figure out from the ship. You are typing into this computer, trying to hack through their firewalls, their security, all of it. It's a well-oiled machine at this point. Uh, it's a dance you've done a million times over. You could do it in your sleep, and it would be perfect. And thankfully for you, Meleta is distracting the enemies so perfectly that you manage to get just enough time to break into their database. And as you do so, you actually fall upon the thing that catches your eye and I think that I think you managed to take with you uh, on your own sort of like portable communications device, whatever you might have on you to transport these data. You managed to find that there are some schematics, some code logs of updates that they've been doing to the Leos, the other Leos here. And you realize that, oh, these Leos are not just naked Terminators anymore. The program that Maletta gave to our Leo, the AI to help them learn to be more human, they've been developing their own version of that. Not to the ends that we want, obviously. Killing people with all the negative bits instead of the whole thing, I feel like. Um, I can't fucking stand you. Sorry. <laughs> I can't look at chat while I'm playing anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Anarch, um, this violation of, this feels like a violation of people's rights to hit to anarch like this feels like they're taking away what these people could be and feeding them only the worst parts of humanity and it boils his blood but he knows that he can't risk anything longer this is already a big cache of information so he grabs it and he runs out the door to head towards the engine room and you make it back you manage to make it back without running into any of the other crewmates, without running into any obstacles on your way, partially thanks to Maletta, who has done such a good job of distracting the other, the enemy. But there's this gnawing sensation that sort of like weighs at you as you're going through that these other Leos, they're, they're people too, and they're victims here. Mm -hmm. That it, it complicates things because we're supposed to fight them. They're trying to kill us, but do they deserve that? Yeah, I think Anarch is, Anarch is very struck by this choice, especially when putting, a, like, like thinking about, you know, people in general where it just sort of, um, you know, like, he marauders, bandits, pirates, like, those are people that, like, he can deal with in some sort of capacity of, like, hey, you know, what is leading these people to become so desperate? What can we fix? And if in the end, how do we defend ourselves? And I think um, in light of just that these people are just fully not, not being given their choices, they are being programmed to do what they want to do, and then even more emotionally programmed to be, you know, these killing machines. Um, and our truly is just, there's, there's this very real, um, concern that, uh, like, how do I, how do I move forward in a way that is, um, still respectful to my core morals, the morals of the people in my crew, um, but also protects the lives of the people who these people are endangering, um, and I think while he sneaks through and, and asks this question of himself, we are jumping back to this ruined grocery store. <laughs> I like to imagine that the scene that kind of always before we do it is that Lopez and Leo are like pinned down 
like behind these oranges lopez is like sporanges sorry uh and lopez uh, lopez is like firing and leo is just like also like whatever if Le- uh, leo has a blaster is going through and then liana and uh fan arc are you know confronting each other so i Engaged think that's the that's this, yeah combat. <laughs> so whoever wants to take uh the situation over Yeah, I feel like since Leo is like the, the now that everyone's off them, like Leo is maybe the least um, inhibited. Uh, I I think that they're going to like go directly for fan arc um, as like, as they're fighting Liana, because it feels like, like Leo's fought a bunch of Leos before, but fan arc seems like the ringleader in this situation. So Leo's thinking that like if they take that the fan arc down, then they can the then the rest of them can focus on like getting out of there. Um so yeah, so they're gonna go accompany Liana and uh maybe even like uh like the first thing they're gonna do is like pick up a splut and dying sporange and throw it at Anarch's head to try and get uh or Fanarch's head to try and get his attention on them. Uh, I think as you like, I see uh, Lopez sees you do that. I was like, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll provide cover fire and starts like blasting, to, like try to get you to go over and mm-hmm. just like trying to get them distracted and like runs the other way to like get the cover uh, for them. So I chase uh, Lopez. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're just trying to like flag people off of Liana so that they can get to Fan Arc. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, Fanark is probably enjoying this a lot more uh, than he than he's probably giving. Um, like, uh, like there is a weird smile. You know that uncanny valley where it's just like, oh yeah, I know this person, but this is the wrong person. They are mm-hmm. acting wrong. They're looking wrong, and something is just very wrong here. And there's that uncanny valley grin that is just. This is Anarch's face that you recognize as, but it's not him. And the smile is wrong and that glare is wrong. And he's moving weird, like very inhumanly um, to try and sort of close distance and get in hits and everything. I think when Fanarch had said that bit, that quip about love to see who you're going to hurt this time, I think Liana, the light sort of that comes out of their eyes as they activate sort of their connection to this shadow eldritch other being starts to flicker and starts to like fade a little bit. And that sh- the tentacles start to sort of like move down and start to pull back in towards them a bit as I think it works. Like it successfully gets to him because he remembers what he did to Anarch and they don't want to do that again here to Leo or to Lopez. Mm-hmm. I bet it's probably extra difficult because this is this is fully Anarch's new face with like the, the, the new wound and everything. Okay, so uh, is, is our Anarch back on the ship safely or is he still like making his way through? Um... That, uh, probably back on the ship safely, but we're okay. going to focus on the grocery store right now. Oh, because, the, oh, I, I didn't realize that we were doing a, a switch thing, choosing a challenge for them. Yes. Oh, okay. I mean, honestly, y'all, y'all are getting so many challenges. I feel bad. <laughs> Trying oh, to make you choose it. another one. Um, but let's see. Okay. Sorry, I misunderstood the question you asked me in chat. Or he's... Yep. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Leo, what is something that you feel vulnerable about right now when you see everything that's happening and you're being dragged away and you're, but you can still, are you, is, is Leo still able to see what's happening with the other crew members as they're being dragged or no? So Leo's been freed at this oh, point. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I missed that part. No worries. Okay. Leo's been freed at this point. Um, they are running to help Liana. Liana's okay. powers are uh, faltering uh, due to um, some insecurity about hurting people. Anarch, uh, Fanarch is very smug about this. Probably sends out a quip about it like, oh, 
You can't even control yourself. Um, <laughs> and and uh, Leo is heading towards them, trying to grab Fanark's attention, and Lopez is is firing cover fire right now. And okay, that's so where the, we are. the challenge for Leo is how are you going to get Fanark to focus on you and not hurt the squishy beings that <laughs> you care about so much? Because you want to fight, you want to stop them, but they're so close together that what if you what if you hurt somebody because you're so strong? What if you accidentally hit the wrong person because it's such close quarters fighting right now? I think the the attention will be specifically be, okay. Here's the thing: Leo is a very observant person, and they have observed Anarch and the way Anarch behaves as, in a way, Fanarch for a very long time. So part of them kind of secretly knows how to stir the pot and i think that's what they're gonna they're gonna try and go for with fan arc like they'll they'll say what well, what did he just say i had like a reply to it and then i like completely oh forgot. you can't even control yourself and he said that to liana yeah and then uh so they're they're going to say uh uh they're going they're going to say that i don't want to say like I have a line, but I don't want it to discount Liana. Um, they're going to f say that, like, you'll find in time that control is our forte. Uh, and they'll, they'll, like, include everyone in that. Um, but that, at that point, that's when they're, they're going to say that, leap over Liana, and just, like, send a flying kick down at, at Van Ark's chest. Um, to just try to try and knock him over. Because if he's going to zing out the one-liners, then guess what? Leo has a memory stock of all of Anarch's one-liners, and they are ready to fire him right <laughs> back. Oh, my God. This is the Go best database that I, need to now, that I need to now create in real life. Um, I feel like... Well, so, uh, Jay, was the challenge I want to mitigate the worst of this trap, and the only way to do so is with a daring plan? Yes. All right, that means we have to draw a card to see how Leo's kick goes. Oh, yes, hey. even hit certain so, things like fall I, into the oranges. <laughs> knock on wood. I'm knocking on wood right now. I'm like. So Please. this is a black <laughs> card, so it goes in ah! Katrina's hand, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Look at my baby kicking people in the face. <laughs> so. <laughs> So once they do that, um, because Leo is very short, there's been a lot of like, how's the weather down there commentary. And they look down and they deliver it. And they're like, they're like, how is the weather down there? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think this... they, they really think it's sassy, but like, it's, it's very. <laughs> yeah, I think this fan arc is, is like, like laid out by this kick and sort of like slid a little bit. Um, and I think it, offer like if Liana's tentacles have like sort of died down Anarch is Fanark is now fully on the ground and more accessible I think is mm -hmm. sort of open this huge opening now that like uh he is a, he is vulnerable um and I think seeing that um seeing Leo specifically come to their aid and come and support them I think reminds Liana in this moment of the fact that we are all a family broken as we might be we are all a family and we are here for each other no matter what at the at the end of the day we can we can all agree that we're not trying to hurt each other we want to protect each other and i think that gives them the confidence to stand up a little waveringly but stand up take a step towards Fanark and those shadows that follow at their feet come with them and I think they start to pull around Fanark's body and the tentacles start to creep up along his legs and pin them to the ground and Liana just kind of looks down at Fanark with their tattoo on their uh on their sleeve like brimming with light and shifting colors as they do so and he just kind of looks down and says you will never understand why we do the things that we do your brother they do everything for you and this is how you repay him um i think that fanart looks up 
opens their mouth and just like a mechanical scream of rage comes out. Just like something has been broken inside and there's just anger and the blue lights are sort of like brimming red instead as you've cornered him, but you don't really know what's wrong. Can we capture him? I I think we like, can, can definitely decide. Can we take him back to, with the groceries? I think we can definitely decide to capture him. Mm. I, I would like to, I don't want to like, I don't want to beat him up or anything. I think what Leo was doing is like holding the weight of their foot down on his chest and like letting Liana surround so that they can like subdue and take him back to the ship. Did you have something you wanted to add, Cleric? I was going to say that as you guys, y'all are doing this, uh, Lopez is firing and I think is trying to hail the ship mm-hmm. and is con- just be like, uh, Helios, Helios, we need, like, we need to pick up now. And it's not even static. There's dead air. Like, the message is not going through. Fuck. Fuck. And it's, I think, sees this scene, and it's just, like, we, and I think as that happens, like, more, like, uh, Leo's drop in. So it's like, okay, we have to go. And this so, scrim is probably also drawing more Leos in, like suddenly like more and more people are turning mm-hmm. and like trying to sort of like push in towards the group. Yeah, Lopez tr- like runs in, tries to make like a tunnel and just like sc- like makes a tunnel from here to like probably like the back door and is like through fiery and it's like, we need to go now it is screaming and shooting and all that kind of stuff and so it's up to liana and leo what they want to do if they want to take fan arc or not i think liana kind of looks over concerned at leo seeing sort of this shift in fan arc and asks do you know do you know what's wrong with them i think all of that fight kind of like draining from him suddenly as they realize that something's wrong here yeah, I I feel like, like I feel like Leo's scans on Anarch won't fully work. Like they can tell that something, <sighs> something in there is mechanical. Something in there has programming or AI or something has been altered to make him, um, uh, human plus android. I don't want to say like not human because I don't cyborg. Know I think. Cyborg. There we go. Thank you. The word just went out of my brain. So a cyborg. So like that's. That's the most that like Leo can really tell, maybe because Leo again is is uh, the prototype. So I feel like whatever's happened to Anarch is like more advanced or like built upon what the groundwork of Leo was. Um, so they say like something about this is very familiar, but something is like never something I've never seen before. Okay, we don't have time for this, and Liana will I think like scoop. Fanark up in the shadows, in the tentacles, and is going to take Leo's hand and is going to run towards Lopez and the sort of tunnel that Lopez has created for all of us to escape. Okay. And we make our one last cut to the ship. Uh, distractions full, Anark is back on, back on the ship, but the, that doesn't mean that the danger is past. So Katrina... Tell us what's going on. Yeah. So the danger is certainly not past because even though some of those Leos are watching Spobits and Spout Lost Star, um, uh, there are still reinforcements coming in, just as there are reinforcements coming into the grocery store. And what's more, I would like to suggest that these Leos are not coming by ship. They're coming individually. So if I, any of you were to look outside of the ship, half of the reason your disruption is happening is because there are metallic silver steel bodied beings floating and circling your ship physically. Oh, yeah, I think like Anarch is like stealthing towards the lab, looks out, looks out like one of like the like viewports and sees like a drifting naked metallic Leo and is just like, oh no. <laughs> it's now like shuffling on like all fours trying to go fast. <laughs> exactly. 
Yeah, yes. the viewport, like, what in the what? What? Yeah. <laughs> and like their eyes are like lit, like bright red. So like they're they are like ominously floating in space around you, creating like this static barrier to keep you apart from your your crew. Yeah. Okay. And our, I think I think um and our when he makes it into the lab, it's sort of like almost like just sort of trying to quietly slip towards Maletta and just like, what is going on? Why aren't they moving? Why are they just staring? <laughs> they're, they're in the middle of a marathon right now. <laughs> I think, I think they've been they running. What type of marathon? Show yeah, marathon. Got it. I, I think they've been upgraded and that they're different than the ones we faced before because they are really, they're, they're, they're able to appreciate something other than their orders. Maletta. I know we're, 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 we have, we're surrounded, but. No, what I have to say is about that. Uh, but. <laughs> it's, their emotions have been updated with only negativity. Oh, so they're gonna, they're gonna be shit posting about the anime now? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to type in chat. Oh, that's why they're anime fans. <laughs> I was really hoping this was a I sign anime fans. that we no. were making some kind of ground here, some kind of mutual respect and understanding. But I, I, I guess this was just a fluke. We're also surrounded. Oh God! Reddit user Leo four five seven says. So I. What do we do with the ones that are here watching the anime? I mean, if you have a big enough EMP, maybe we could knock them out for right now. But we need to, okay, I think the EMP, if we could like do one on the outside of the ship would remove the barrier temporarily, but then we'd be grounded as a ship. So it's like... Well, I was thinking focus EMP on these three. Okay. So we can put them somewhere as for whatever the hell the leos are doing outside i'm not i don't know what we're supposed to do sure. about that i uh but it's it's blocking our ability to to like contact anyone we can't yeah. we can't even get out like this is just uh, i just i i can't help but look at them being non-violent in this moment and want to do something with that and i know this is not the time because we're in the middle of a battle I can put my bleeding heart away for five minutes while we deactivate them and put them somewhere. Is that what you were going to say? What if I hack one of them? That feels kind of icky and not consensual, but also we don't really have a choice. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's bad, but it would maybe, it would save their lives. Well, once you hack into their system, what are you going to do? Like, how would you They're alter on a that? network. System? I yeah. just push them to walk away from the ship. Okay. I, I but, trust you. If you think you can do it, I'm going to back you up and let you do it. I have to say sorry to Leo later. This is I know. It's, so, it's okay. so awful. Uh, above the table, I want to O-card this because this is like you know, we've established these guys as androids, but they're yeah. gaining emotions, they have sentience. Is this okay? Like, this it's is not, it's mental, really not okay, mental but like, our lives are in danger. We don't know what to do. We, yeah. we had above no the table. Are we comfortable ship. taking the story here? Yeah. I, the, yeah. the story I, was going to go here regardless. I just wanted it to be Leo's <laughs> choice, but I, it's, it's going to complicate our relationship with Leo knowing that we had, you know, the enemy here and we didn't choose any of the other options besides removing their agency and telling them what to do is it better I, to kill your enemy or tell them what to do <laughs> like well i think the, the the core of it is that at, like those leos are already being um like their agency is already being violated by whoever is controlling exactly. them mm. um so it's 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 not better but in the end, like the long run, what you're going to do is ultimately give them, I assume, after everything, like you're going to yeah. give them choice. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. So we don't want to yeah. destroy them. We're giving them a chance to walk away from this encounter and hopefully in the future they can mm -hmm. be liberated. 
Yeah, it's like knocking someone out. Uh, and that's that's and basically how we're going to rationalize this. Werewolf. How the characters are going to rationalize this? They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like, we can see so that they could be more. <laughs> yeah, your, your friend uh, starts to turn into a werewolf. So you go get the were werewolf repellent or the werewolf de werewolfer. Um, and let them fall asleep for a little while. <laughs> Why did you pick this example? The D <laughs> you, you, tr you trank your friend. It's not yeah, good. You can trank your yeah, friend, not, not a silver bullet. bullet. You trank your okay, friend. Okay, that's yeah, there we go. Lovingly, moment, I think, there we go. No, that makes sense. Loving, you're loving. I think we're getting lost them. in the sauce a little yeah, bit. We really sweet. are. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so Maletta says, I think this is the best possible solution because we're not going to destroy them. We're just going to keep them from killing us, and hopefully, we can get back to this place where they were just peacefully watching anime. I, I could, yeah. I could see a future. Has where we can no get comment. Anarch has is like looking around Maletta's lab real quick. Like what can grabs I use? Like a, grabs like a, like an EMP pulse, yep. grabs like a data spike and um, just sort of like peers over the table and then hauls himself over the table um, and very dramatically uh, points this thing. It doesn't click. They turn to look at him. He pulses and then sort of, sort of grabs one to start working on it. Um, nice. And I think, uh, you know, it's it's sort of like a opening up of a mind like Maletta looks and he's, he's sort of looking at it and he's like, okay, things are very different here. Watching closely, taking notes. Of, huh. Yeah, that of, is. Wow. Beep, 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 beep. Um, I think while the rest of the party is sort of approaching, um, is sort of approaching the ship, and can maybe see this whole thing of Leo's? This unholy is, is conglomeration this, of Leo's. Is this a vulnerability or a challenge? Oh. Uh, Katrina. Uh, Katrina, you're oh, the one cool. that has picked. Right. Uh, so I think... Mm. Yeah, I think I would put that um, uh, under challenges because I think mm. that would work that would work well with what you're trying to do here with which is like disable the Leo leos and 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 store them somewhere safe uh so Perfect. i know of a way to reprogram our defenses and weaken the enemy greatly but there is no safe path to the computer core so maybe what you're trying to do requires like a lot more power um to safely do this to them so that they're not incapacitated or harmed in the future mm -hmm. um so that's that's what you're trying to do is like there's uh, uh the computer core or like the core of the ship is where like when you finally deactivate them you can like yeah. store them safely i think the core of this um is maletta's plan so i think i want to have maletta draw the card <laughs> oh goody okay so for maletta the card color is red. No! <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? You're the one who wanted to hack them! <laughs> if you want me to make up the consequences, I can. Well, Damn, you know, Anarch really said, this is your responsibility, huh? Like, so because you wanted to hack them, I have to make a sacrifice? What? I can make the sacrifice, dear. Because I don't, That doesn't make me feel any better. That's worse. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know. I think I kind of like making Maletta feel worse. Oh my god, you're like, yo. <laughs> is, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so, oh my god, I know exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Because you've been trying to be one step ahead of the enemy as you're hacking, there's a way that if you trip this, it signals the person who's been controlling them that they have been hacked, but you know how to bypass it. However, it causes the spike to feed back into your hand and you get like severely shocked, like really badly. Because okay. you can, yeah. But, yeah. but by doing that, the enemy has not detected the hack. And I think Th um, that's the sacrifice. Yeah, you you hear Anarch like scream oh. from the front <laughs> and just sort of like his arm going limp, and then this oh, other God. arm just sort of like quickly trying to fix it. And then outside, you guys see all these Leos sort of like lowering like onto the dock instead of like vibrating around the ship and just sort of walking in a straight line away from it. No. Um, let's see. Out of all of us, who has made the most sacrifices here Well, today? gee! <laughs> I, only got, I only got my arm shocked. Liana got hurt. 
I feel like it was you, my friend. Yeah. I feel like it was you. I feel like it was you again. Uh, I like to imagine this, like we got back to the shuttle and we're slowly making our way back up to where the ship is. And we see like the holes that are drilled in, like the floating Leos. And then uh, like, what the fuck's happening? And then as soon as the ship's dock, uh, y'all punch it. And then I think that's where that, like, that kind of scene ends. <laughs> I think that an ending that is appropriate is the enemy leaves chaos and carnage in their wake. Yeah. We all suffer huge losses. Confidence is shaken, but you know, like physical harm and everything, but the enemy leaves behind something that gives us a glimmer of hope. Uh, they left like behind some, fan arc. They left behind fan arc and three Leos. Three Leos that appreciate quality entertainment. Oh my God. Exactly. <laughs> and it shows that, oh, one of the things that we thought was a weakness, them knowing about all the upgrades that our Leo has made and then using that to teach themselves was actually one of our strengths because through you, you have brought a glimmer of humanity to the enemy and we might be able to use that to reach them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great hope. Um, and then we're going to move on towards our card pulls for the for this game. Okay. <laughs> so we have five card pulls. Uh, I right. think we'll start with Anarch and Maletta and then go through to Liana, Leo, and Lopez. All right. I'll go in game order, starting with Vic, and then I'll go to Cleric, Katrina, uh, Hamna J. Okay. okay. Anarch, you got a red. <laughs> um... <laughs> I um I think uh the enemy getting stronger is actually something distant from here. It's not actually according to something that we did or didn't do. I think um what we're what we are have become unaware of is that other people are joining this cause. And I think slowly there is a creep of other planets becoming subjugated by the people who are who are controlling these Leos. And so like we're slowly losing allies um, in the moments that we're fighting for our lives. Okay. Cleric, your card is black. Okay. Fucking okay. Okay, beautiful, 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 beautiful. I think Lopez is not going to keep this card. I think it's going to Liana. I think that Lopez is like, was just doing covering fire, saw that brief moment of like hesitation and wanted to jump in and wanted to uh, like be like, oh my God, they're hurt, but then saw like, uh, Leo jump in and do all this stuff and I think was just like maybe I've been like thinking I have to be this like big protector person like a little too hard like everyone in the crew can really take care of themselves and I know Leona got covered and I know Lopez got, uh, Leo's got it covered I know everyone's got it covered maybe that's maybe I don't have to like maybe I should focus more on me and what I need to do I love that. All right. For Katrina, I have black. Um, so our loyalty is, perhaps our loyalty is regained when Leo comes back and discovers that like, you know, instead of plowing through and killing the other Leos, um, Anarch and, and Letta decided to like, keep the three Leos that are now like knocked out uh, at the core. And Leo feels a lot like, like Leo already trusted them, but this is like the the ground foundation of like, if I'm ever in trouble, they're never going to think that I'm not worth saving. Oh my goodness. I love that so much. Okay. Hamna, your card is also black. Hey, look at that! We're doing so good! Yeah, I'm not keeping it. (laughs) You (laughs) fucking... I I knew you were immediately not going to keep it. You really thought. You really thought. 
saw it, didn't you? Uh, so I will be giving this one to Leo. I think for that moment in the grocery store, I think Leo reminded Liana just of how strong this team's bond actually can be and once was, you know? Sure, we fractured. Sure, things went to the shitter real fast, but there were good times before that. We had a strong bond. There was a reason that we were together all of this time. And I think that uh, Leo reminded everyone, or well, maybe not everybody, but reminded Liana at least in that moment of the fact that those bonds still exist, even if they're buried very deep. Oh, thank you. And last but not least, Jay. We have red. Oh, oh God, I knew it. I'm so mad. Ship crew is really dropping the ball here. <laughs> we kept it together for as long as we could. <laughs> we tried, God damn it. It was two of us against the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, despite our best efforts, the enemy grows stronger. Uh, it, I don't know if these Leos have sublight into their heels or something, but eventually they're going to get back there. And uh, Anarch made a sacrifice so that the enemy was not alerted at the time of the hack. However, due to the fact that they are all networked, uh, everything up until the very moment they were EMP'd was recorded and sent to them. And as soon as they get back to where they are, their creator is going to be able to piece together every single detail of that entire encounter. And they didn't have life signs readers on the ship that was docked on us because they don't, they didn't think they'd need that. But because they figured out what happened, they're like, we're going to have to install those now because clearly we've got a problem with these organics. Hmm. So it will be much harder to sneak up on them again. Oh no. <laughs> Dr. Lejum grows stronger. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about talk about a rough time. Yeah. But uh we are that was our game for my game. It's a and good so game. Next in next in line. It's our dear friend cleric all right cleric thank you so uh so much for taking up our next game what are we playing dear so i think after this moment of like we just jetted off into space kind of everything's kind of tense i think uh anarch's probably in the med bay just like repairing their hand with maletta i think leo is probably just like looking at the other three leos that are on the ship and just kind of like running analysis and I think uh, Lopez is kind of in the train, like in the little training room, kind of just like practicing and trying going through the whole moments that just happened. And it's kind of just blasting and just like practicing aim. Oh, uh, when Liana, if you want to walk by, because uh, it's like everyone else is on the other side of the ship. Uh, everyone's over on like the other side in the training halls, like on the other, like, one side or the other uh and the other if you want to walk by so we can pay we can play the game the last time we touched <laughs> so uh, that's gay uh <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. i just have to i'm sorry i have to um no i think that makes sense i think liana after all of that is still replaying over and over what fan arc had said to him in their head the idea that who are they going to hurt next? Who are they going to hurt next? And as much as Leo helped them gain a little bit of confidence in that moment, that's still sort of gnawing at the back of their head. And so he goes to the place that he used to go for sanctuary back when we were first together. And that's the training room. Actually, it's a little bit of a misspeaking there. It wasn't just where he used to go for sanctuary. It used to be where they used to go with Lopez as well. And so it's perhaps unsurprising that when they arrive, they, they come and they in, they walk in on Lopez already there. Oh. Oh. Uh, I'm hey. sorry I didn't think that you were going to be here. No, like, I 
this is where you know blow off steam kind of thing and just like couldn't like did clear our head clear my head clear our head clear you know uh yeah it's where i feel normal or better same and i think you can see that on liana's face their whole demeanor there's they've been deflated a little bit there's just something that's not quite there that used to be as they're sort of like they walk into the training room and i think they sort of take up the spot across the across mm -hmm. the arena from you and they just kind of look at you and they say so uh what exactly are you practicing working on uh yeah um i think like notices how deflated you're feeling it's just kind of just like doesn't really know how to bring it up it's just like yeah i'm uh working on my aim i know in the grocery store there was a lot of like fire that was going on and i just wanted to i missed a couple of shots and i, I don't ever want to miss you know especially when something so crucial and so like a trap is like that uh, yeah, i don't want to miss a shot you know especially to want to be able to make sure everyone everyone's okay and i want to make sure i i cover everybody okay practice on me what i need to <laughs> I need to gain better control of everything. So you practice your aim, I practice deflecting. Yeah? And I think Lopez kind of like takes a little bit of a step back and is like, I, I, I don't want to shoot you, Liana. I, I, don't feel, I don't feel comfortable shooting you. What better way to practice? I, I have targets. There's other ways to practice besides conflict, you know? Fine. I, but what do you recommend then? Well, uh, for me, it's target practice. I always like to imagine just like being far away and just zoning in and out of where I feel comfortable, where I feel safe, where I feel good and kind of hone in on that feeling. And then usually when I'm practicing, uh, I can, I recall those feelings and I bring that into combat and it kind of helps me, especially when there's a lot of gunfire to, or blaster fire, it makes me feel I can tune back in. Do you have that kind of mindset? Like when you go, when you use your, when you use your abilities, do you, do you have that mindset? Do you like, do something that you help to visualize to help you better control what's going on? Hearing that question, Liana takes a step forward, closes a little bit of that distance that is between Lopez and themselves and their eyes start to light brighten up again, losing, losing the uh, green color of their eyes as they do so. And the shadows start to form at their feet, just small ones, I think, just kind of bristling. And Liana nods. I like to think about, it's just, losing myself, the space physically between myself and the other world that exists all around us. I can always feel it, but it always feels a little bit separate. So closing that physical distance, touching it, helps me ground myself into it. Have you ever, I guess, felt that physical closeness? And I think Lopez kind of just like in that moment is just like at first looks like tenses the shoulders as you approached and like moved in but then kind of uh, moves 
and just stays very still and is just looks at you and looks down and is just like yeah i uh i felt that once i remember the feeling of somebody laughing and touching my shoulder as we sat and watched things. I remember in a combat when someone touched my hand and we ran together. I remember the feeling of somebody touching my hand when I lay in a, in a hospital bed alone. And they were the, one of the few people who stayed. And I remember that touch. And you would recall that that's all moments that Liana did. I think Liana's hands as they close the distance between Lopez and themselves, his hand kind of hovers over Lopez's own, their fingertips just centimeters apart, as if Liana is asking for permission to touch your fingers. And he looks up at Lopez and says, You were never alone in that hospital bed. You've never been alone. <laughs> Even after all of this time that we've been apart, I feel like, maybe this is silly, but I feel like we've never really been apart. And I don't want to lose you now either. I think Lopez, like, doesn't fully, like, does that thing where they only really wrap, like, one finger around another finger, like, not full, like, handling just one finger, very, like, like, gingerly at first, just, like, does that, and is, like, I, um, it's hard not to feel alone when you can't feel a lot of things. And it's hard to remember that feeling because sometimes I will, it's getting harder and harder to remember that feeling. Liana's other hand, I think, kind of softly runs over the armor on, if it's okay, the armor that is over Lopez's other arm and kind of hovers over maybe like a lock or a latch of some kind that the button essentially that clicks onto place, that clicks this part specifically onto Lopez. And looking at it, not looking at Lopez's eyes, they just kind of whisper very quietly, almost as if they're ashamed to ask this question, even. They say, You left me, but I suspect that you didn't want me to, that you didn't want to. Is that true? And I think I think they let go of the finger and they take a step back and they say I I didn't mean I didn't mean to leave. I I I'm I just 
I didn't want, I, I don't, I didn't mean to leave. I didn't want to leave. I didn't, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't be sure how you would see me. I, I wasn't ready for that to break, for that to, to know. And Liana, I think, takes their own step back. You never gave me a chance. You never gave me a chance to see you and to choose you. Would you? I, 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 I can't. There's so many things that I can't do that I used to, and there's so many things that I'm... Even Tr do you trust me? And I think there's silence that hangs in the air for a, like a moment where Lopez puts their hands down and a very soft whisper of, I do, but I don't know if I trust myself. At those words, the tentacle, the shadow tentacles at Liana's feet kind of push out from the ground and wrap themselves around Lopez's feet, I think very, very softly and gently. And similar to the way that Liana's hands were resting on like a buckle or a latch on Lopez's shoulder, I think they sort of hover around a similar sort of mechanism on their boots. Give me a chance now to prove it to you. And I think Lopez doesn't really move and allows this to happen. And I think you hear a click as the boots get unbuckled. And again, Lopez doesn't move, doesn't do anything about it. You see maybe a tension in the shoulders, but does not move to stop or move to go. And I think Liana just kind of walks a little bit closer, looks very intently at Lopez's eyes through this mask. May I? And I think as you've stepped closer, Lopez leans down and puts their face to your face, your like forward to forehead, and says, only probably loud enough for Liana to hear, like even barely, of you may. And Liana's own hands move up at the same time as those tentacles move up, and the tentacles kind of snake around Lopez's legs, latch, unlatching every buckle along the way. And Liana's hands move specifically to Lopez's helmet. And I think that he slowly takes it off. What does Liana see as he looks into Lopez's face, unobscured for the first time in years? I think you see somebody who has a lot of scars, bald, uh, complete, like still bald, has always been bald, even like before anything. So still bald, but one eye is completely whited out. And there is like burnt, like basically burned like marks all over, like through the neck and like up. And like on the face and keeps a uh 
and keeps a like a uh, suit like there's like a, a thin mesh like a thin like bodysuit that's from the neck down but the face is very much covered in uh burn marks and like one eye completely whited out and just barely it like the brown of another eye and very much you can see that as you've done this uh lopez won't look you in the eye and is just very much like keeping their eyes down liana takes their one hand puts it underneath lopez's chin and kind of moves their face so that flinches, they are making eye contact flinches a bit when you do that very gently and with this eye contact looking right into your eyes lopez liana says i still choose you tears just straight just start welling up and it's just like After all this. Now and always. And I think as you say that, now and always, Lopez goes down and tries to go for a kiss. And I think you do. And as you do, the tentacles, I think, are snaking up further and further up your body. And from there, everything fades to black. Tee hee. I, I think that's a great place to leave off for today. <laughs> Yes. Uh, except yeah, give, give those crazy kids some. Privacy. There are card draws for this game, loves. Oh, oh, card. I forgot. I was like, "There's no ending to this game. We just yeah. end it whenever." <laughs> 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 they just fades yeah. to black. Everyone. Surprise! I got the cards ready. Hopefully, fades to black cards, love. All right. I will cry. Larry. Who wants to go first? Do you want I, to go you know, first? I'll, I'll go last. I'll go last. I'll you want to go last? Okay, okay. okay. Give, so, me, yeah, give me the yeah. first card. Hamna, yeah. your card is black. I should oh, go first. Larry, you gave up a black card! That's fine. You know what? I would have given it to you anyways. So <laughs> uh, uh, hello, Uno Reverse. Uh, this card goes to uh, Lopez um, for back. obvious reasons. No. <laughs> obvious reasons. Lopez gets the card. Okay. Okay. And then... Uh, Oh wait! You don't. You have to describe something. I mean, I'm not being close to this, but I feel like this. Whole... Okay, that's fair. Like, I mean, we have the obvious reason. Well, the, we go back to Lopez's room. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Sorry. I was thinking it. Anyway, no, 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 either. Anyway. I mean, honestly, zero graph. In my in my sparring room. Look, nobody else is gonna show it's, up, right? You know so. what? True. They can walk in Nick. They all go to training and next session just see boop, just boots like on the cool. Anyway, next card, cleric. Uh red. You did this to yourself. You did this to yourself. No. Um I knew real. here's here's the thing. First off, Friends Who Roll Dice is a great channel. <laughs> I <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. I knew it. In my solo souls, I knew it. And I knew comedy. Comedy takes all. But God damn it. You've been uh, blessed by the comedy gods. They knew. They knew this would be funny. I think... Hmm. I think this is both a... As a... Uh, I think a good scene just for everybody, but also just like a thing of that is while we're all on this, like through this moment, while Anarch and Jay are and Maletta are in the uh, med bay and Leo is looking through the robots, suddenly a communication comes through. And it's like a final communication of like they're like of the big bad saying we're making a push and a countdown of like three days who was this intended for i think just for 
us, but also for all the other planets that haven't already been like ah. segregated. We I would so say like system wide message. Yeah, a system wide message. I don't think I say not three days, maybe a, a, a <laughs> week to Can give I have us something really creepy to the scene. Oh god! Sure, go for it. Um, I think as soon as this communication passes through some some very mechanical electronic laughing comes from whenever wherever they're storing fan art like it's almost maniacal like ah, 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 ah. and it's just like the repeating with like like the little electronic reverb go gag is that, oh is that okay um <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just like this. Yes, that's yeah, that's beautiful it. and brilliant. I I hate it. It's brilliant. <laughs> so I think I've just sped up our little timetable. So we can't just be like zooming around, just chilling. We have to make a final confrontation. <laughs> what you're saying is that last uh, shopping trip was really the collector base. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been. <laughs> Leo tried to get dragged away. You know. Oh. Yeah, you know, almost. <laughs> At least we, we, we have didn't to name end the, up uh, in a weird slushy coffin. <laughs> oh, that'd be, that'd be terrible. We, 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 uh, I think the first order of business of the next game before we get into the serious stuff is that we totally, you know, so everybody think about that. Larry Moe and Curly. They unfortunately cannot be named Leo. That would be very confusing. So they need to have their own names. Um, oh, tell oh, Leo. Leo. Like the Zodiacs. <laughs> oh, okay, or that. <laughs> I was thinking the big bad is the Zodiac Killer, so all of them are like, there's Leo, there's Scorpio, there's this Aquarius, you know? That's how we like spend, that. like, that blowing off really steam, cool. and that's what we do. <laughs> Just, that's how yeah. we blow off steam. Do you think that one is more of a Pisces or more of a Virgo? Like... I'm getting a lot of We're going to base that what? based on what anime they enjoyed like most. Capricorn energy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> You like Naruto, Gemini. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That is definitely a Gemini. Oh, um, also, is there a cute name for our shuttle, the one that you guys took? It, that's the Icarus. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. I was going to yes. say, like, yes. sunspot or something. Yes. God Perfect. damn it. That's the Icarus. Icarus flew too yes. close to Close to the soul. Yes. Why are you like this? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. I'm big brain right. moving. Yeah, I see that. I see that now. <laughs> All right, folks, that has been our game for the evening. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. And uh, as we can see, the drama is ratcheting up. Um, in the meantime, of course, we all want to say our goodbyes. So please tell the people uh, where they can find you, what you're, what you're up to, and uh, Hamna, why don't you start us out? Bye. I'm never prepared. Um, <laughs> hello, everybody. My name is Hamana. I use any and all pronouns, and I am a TTRPG performer. You can find me on Twitter at hshahid underscore, where I talk about all of the different projects that I'm a part of. I'm a part of a variety of different projects, and when my cat is not screaming at me, uh, I'm sorry if you can hear him in the background. <laughs> um, but uh, you can find me this saturday over on transplanter rpg's channel at 8 p.m eastern time um for those of you that don't know transplanter is an all transgender poc led dnd 5e homebrew anti-colonial anti-orientalist actual play uh it's a lot of fun we're very gay if you like the gay shit i do here i do that over there too so you should definitely come check us out all right uh jay Hi, I'm Jay Justice. You can find me at that Jay Justice on all the things. Come to my Twitter and Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff for all the fun video game and comic book discussions. Biggest She-Hulk fan you know, I also cosplay She-Hulk. <laughs> and I'm right here on Friends of Roll Dice. All right, and next up, whoever wants to talk, because I'm not going <laughs> Cleric. That. Hello, it's this has been your local fuck up cleric here. If you want to catch me, what I'm doing, catch me on TikTok and Twitter at cleric underscore 34, where I should post a lot. But if you want to see me talk more long uh, long term, I have a podcast known as Monster Fuckers Anonymous. Show we talk about monsters, talk about their lore, everything about them, everything they do. And rate on a scale of one ten, whether or not you should be at yes, you, you who's listening, you who's watching, you all them over there should have sex with those monsters. Some are good, some are bad, some are mid, but all of them are sexy we're in the middle of our recording block right now before we jump back into the fall uh, uh to give a preview of something that we talked about somebody we won't name names brought up the monster house as a monster uh you know we don't need to know who did that but we talk about that at length 
So if you're interested in listening to that conversation, please tune into MFA anywhere you find podcasts. I might have a friend who spilled the secret to me. <laughs> <laughs> Katrina, uh, let's move away from that thought right now about uh, this obvious bore. Um, but no! <laughs> I I will I will one note that uh, Hamna has an adorable cat. You can also, if you think Jay uh, is the greatest She Hulk fan in the world, Jay has la- has proven it in the past by featuring uh, as a cosplayer as She Hulk on a Marvel comic cover. So like that's out there if you want to go collect that. Um, but yes, hello, I'm O Katrina. You can find me anywhere if you look for O H C A T R I N A. Oh, Katrina, all over the social medias. Uh, I host uh, a small string of podcasts, including Pedro Pascal, where we talk about the cinematography of the actor Pedro Pascal. Um, I also host a fight club far, far away, as well as What's Glup, which are two Star Wars podcasts about completely different things. Um, You can also find my writing over on Medium, uh, my TTRPG performing all over the place and yeah if you're looking for anything involving me just look up Katrina and I'll be there <laughs> I'm so glad and then I'd love to thank Mare as our producer um <laughs> we can the stuff had, was like collab- uh, conspiring against us and Mare got us all together to make sure that this recording went out and is a fantastic person I love them very much and finally, myself, I have been Victor, I've been your captain this evening, and I have navigated us safely once more to the end of the episode. Um, you can find all of my my uh, upcoming projects um, and news about them on my Twitter, at Villain Vicencio, um, as well as find me next Tuesday on Wander Home over on TTRPG channel, in which I play a large, um, cute um, Mukuchi, which is a... Um, Venezuelan shaped dog. Um, it's great. (laughs) And thank you uh, so much for watching, guys. Uh, that's it for tonight. Okay, just do the quick TLDR for me as well. Hey, everybody, we have a bunch of stuff on the channel. We got Sundays, we got our uh, Demon's Creek or Urban Shadows game. All POC Wild West game that's at 1 p.m. Eastern time. On Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern, we have our flagship campaign, D&D 5e, The Mind and the Martyr. Every Wednesday here, we have this lovely crew uh, being very queer uh, space vigilantes and fighting a great enemy, and it's exciting and gay, and I love it. And then every other Thursday, start the next episode is on September 1st. We have Camp Carnage, our Monster of the Week campaign. And Saturday, premiering on the 27th of August at 1 p.m. ET, is Print Weaver. So we will see you next week. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye.